in uh, previous video in we talk about in for the chapter 11 the equation of the change for non isothermal system we just reviewed the the total energy equation for continuum case then we just uh, uh, look uh, just uh, drive and analyze the mechanical mechanical energy equation or continuum and later we have seen the total energy equation minus mechanical energy equations gives the result thermal energy equations so then in chapter 11 we look at example the solution of the for this example uh, application of the continuity equation linear momentum equation and thermal energy equation for just one variable uh, variable spatial variable x or y or z or r or theta or uh, z so on now in the chapter we just go uh the problem solution some examples actually uh temperature distribution with more than one independent variable for example for in this chapter we will obtain some example in engineering example the temperature distribution is going to be dependent on the first in the first example the first example is going to be depend on one spatial variable uh, x or y or z for example and the time in the second type of example we call this unsteady state unsteady state problem but in the second type we will get steady state but this time uh, temperature is going to be dependent on for example two spatial variables for example x y and we call this steady state problem type so okay let's continue uh we in the chapter actually we are gonna utilize the similar mathematical uh the methods for problem solving like in we use in chapter four for the linear uh, momentum equation solution the first type of uh, uh example is if you call this the section 12.1 unsteady heat conduction in solids uh from the in the chapter 11 we obtain these final equations for uh, uh for final equ for general equation their left side was uh, showing the substantial uh uh there a substantial differential for t dependent uh, the time and this term is just show the conductive molecular uh, transport uh, energy transport this term was going to uh, give uh, inside of the viscous forces and we just defined this some um, later in the equation some mu some distribution function like this the distribution function we can find in the table and this final term is just comes from the pressure uh, effect pressure forces of the system so but for for the any solids so there is no any viscous force or there is no pressure uh, effects on the on the solid that's why we just left the two terms inside of this since the viscosity v is the zero then from this three uh, assumption we, can, we obtain that uh, final result in the Friar's laws of heat conduction, we can write like this. But if we assume 
the thermal conductivity K is independent of the temperature and the position. Like we can obtain this final relation. In here, this term alpha is represent thermal uh, diffusivity as we defined before in the chapter uh, nine. Chapter nine. So we can write in the as a final form of our uh, thermal energy equation. So to find to find the uh, temperature distribution inside of the solids, we need to solve this equation is dependent the time and the also uh, spatial uh, variables. In here, we are just going to consider one spatial variable. In in this section, uh, actually, it is uh, give some example answer the heat conduction problem in the first problem is talk about we are gonna just go review the method of combination of variables less similar to chapter 4 and second one the method of separation of the variables okay in the first uh, problem just quick to go and look over it so heating a semi infinite slab and consider uh, uh, kind of a slab like this this is the solid one. This is the solid one. This is the y direction. But we call, it, we call this a semi infinite. Uh, we defined before what was the meaning of the semi, a semi infinite. For example, the earth this is some surface. On the surface, has some. Uh, Temperature distribution, let's say this distribution is called semi infinite. Actually, any kind of uh, system we call this semi infinite uh, systems. Okay, let's continue. Ah, sorry. Again, okay, uh, let's describe this lab like this in 2D presentation. This is the y is equal to zero and this is the y equal infinity actually. And a space from y is equal to zero to y is infinity. It goes from this distance. Word. So uh, initially, when the time is at, uh, when the time is less than zero, initial temperature of the solid was t zero. But when the time is set equal to zero, suddenly the temperature of the uh, the solid increases the T1 by some uh, energy source. And when the time T greater than zero, this, this temperature of T1 maintained inside of solid. So find the temperature dependent, uh, uh, time dependent temperature profile uh, for, for the solids. So, okay. Uh, in here, we're just gonna use uh, this, this equation here, that one. Um, but as we have seen in, in the chapter four, we're just making this, just uh, uh, offer some dimensions variable. Okay, let's uh, define that one. This is going to be t minus t0 divided by t1 minus t0 in we introduce here for for this equation by initial condition when the time is uh, equal and less than zero this is going to be zero why because r t is equal to t0 at the time equal to zero and less than zero then that's why it's going to be zero for all the y uh, as a boundary condition when the y is equal to a zero in our slab you know as i showed before then this is going to take the uh, number as a one y because this is going to be a t1 when the y is equal to zero and y is equal to zero but this is uh, when the y is equal to infinity or the all t greater than zero this term is going to be zero again why for the infinity slab let's consider like this 
infinity uh, slab it says at the time t equal to the surface of year zero that one a surface this surface is suddenly the temperature increased to t1 but it's just uh, in the t, this just t0 for any time so we will obtain the temperature uh, distribution for that uh, for the slab for the slab for this condition that's why this when y is equal to infinity here for the, all the t's is going to be zero because this is going to be t zero okay so from um, the chapter four the solution of uh, this problem we are going to just use the the method of combination of variables uh, now in here in here in here let's define our dimensions the variables let's let's define this uh, is dependent that one and this is going to be y divided by four thermal diffusivity and t and from here we can write our partial derivative respect to t we can perform the chain rule we can write that one by this form this comes from the chain rule partial derivative and if we take the derivative of this term with respect to t then we will obtain minus 1 over 2 and d or the end from here the first one this is going to be equal to that one then if we continue our discussion again for that one y is going to be similar manner from the chain rule we can write this and this is going to be one over four t and then we can write this square y square is going to be equal uh y square and one four because since this is equal that one then this is going to be equal uh that one from here so we can write here from we can just insert here finally we obtain that one now now is organizing the our equation from we just obtain second order just ordinary differential equation for this problem so since we are in the second order ordinary homogeneous differential equation now by defining the boundary conditions boundary condition for ordinary differential equation at is when this is equal to zero just obtain that one one the second boundary condition at this equals infinity then we have the one zero so by inserting uh, by so uh, to solve this uh, uh, equation, we need to use this to, to boundary, boundary condition. Uh, from the solution of the bond, uh, this problem, uh, we just reach the uh, down one uh, error function, and that's why the our solution from here is going to equal down one. Is going to equal down one. Down one is equal our dimensionless variables. And this, one, this is uh, this is going to be our solution for for that problem. Is to give the distribution of the 
temperature inside of uh, slab. Okay. As a second problem, so heating of the finite uh, slab. This time, uh, let's consider some not uh, semi-infinite slab, just finite slab like this. Let's say you have some slab here. This is the this again our y direction. But this time from the middle, it's cut like this, and this side is going to be uh, minus b. The side is going to be uh, plus b. Actually, this y is going to be equal to b from here. Um, thickness of the slab. The problem says this slab initially at rest of t has the temperature of t zero, and at the time is t equal to zero. The surface, this surface here, top one and the bottom one from here, they're just gonna suddenly increase the temperature. It's going to be t one. It's going to be T1 suddenly increase, then find the temperature distribution uh, dependent on the respected y and the time. Okay, for this uh, problem in the solution, uh, the following uh, dimensional variables can be defined so for that one, for the coordinate, for the time. Then we can write again here, you are going to use this. Equation, equation to solve for so, solid uh, slab here, and we can write this equation by the dimensionless form, and we can write our initial conditions at this dimensional normal when equal to zero. This is going to be one boundary condition one and two when this is equal to uh, plus one, one or either uh, minus one. This is going to be zero for the old is greater than zero. Uh, the solution of this uh, problem uh, is going to use the method of the separation of the variables. Then the problem convert to the, this uh, solution that one, and we obtain is it's uh, same order in the chapter four. Then finally the solution of this of this problem is going to be like this. The temperature distribution inside of uh, the slab so these are this is the first type of uh, actually uh, equation this is going to be actually uh, temperature distribution for the uh, finite thickness for 2b so so on these are some uh, plots show temperature distribution inside of the solid, so on. Okay, now we just skip some other type of uh, problems here. Uh, problems here, we have seen here that the temperature just depends on the T and time and the N spatial uh, variable. So, the second type of problems for here, we can call uh, steady state heat conduction laminar incompressible flow. Since this time different than the different than the the, the solid uh, type of problems we have fluid here that's why we need to solve first continue to equation by this form then the motion uh, equation of motion equation by this form finally we need to solve the energy equation uh, using using this final form so. A solution of these three equations simultaneously is going to give the R temperature distribution for the steady state conduction laminar incompressible flow. So, there's another type of you can see the laminar a tube flow with constant heat flux at the wall. And if you just you can just go and go read, uh, uh, you can obtain more information. From the example, but now I just skip this example. I'm not gonna go over it. Just showing the type of uh, uh, 
uh, problems and and which in the final form of uh, continuity equations we are going to utilize. Another type of uh, problems we call the steady state potential flow of the heat in solids. Uh, again, here, since this is the steady state, we not we just need to solve the conductivity equation, this form, but this time, this is going to be dependent on the two spatial uh, spatial coordinates, let's say x, y, and this problem give inside of the solution of this type of problems, actually. Okay, uh, if you go uh, in here, the section talk about the boundary layer theorem for the dynamic thermal flow, and so on. Um, we just continue to review this uh, there's some more examples here. You can see you can obtain from this chapter 12 for the more than one independent variables, so on. Okay, uh, I just finished the, the chapter 12 here. I think this is enough. Now I just move uh, to chapter 14, and as a second part of this book, as a uh, energy transport this is going to our now uh, now later we are going to come back this uh, special topics later and we are going to talk about them uh, more detailedly so we just we here and chapter 14 is going to be our final uh, chapter to review this chapter talk is about interface transport in non isothermal system uh, so the definition of the, the heat transfer coefficients uh, okay Let's consider the flow system as we defined before. The fluid uh, flowing, uh, let's say, you have some, you have some fluids, and fluids. Let's say it's it's flowing. You have system like this, like tube, and the fluid is flowing through the, this uh, system, or you have some any submerged object let's say spur and so so uh, fluid go around around it's like this so so then let's say we have we can we can encounter in engineering these two type of uh, uh, problems and let's say the solid surface in the both side is the the warmer than the fluid sides then so heat is being transferred from the solid uh, fluid. Let's say the surface of this uh, tube warmer. Let's say T1. This is the temperature T0. Since T1 is greater than T0, the heat is going to be transferred from the surface of the tube to through the uh, fluid. Similar case. Let's say the surface of the um, uh, this object uh, sprayer is T1. Let's say the temperature of the, the fluid is T0, then it's, uh, heat is going to be transferred through the, from the uh, solid uh, uh, fluid. So that's why the important thing here, uh, the rate of heat uh, flux across the solid to fluid interface, what we expect to depend on the area of the interface, this area or this area, surface area, and the temperature drop uh, between the fluid and the solid. And then we can define define the heat flux by this formula. This is the surface area heat transfer ring happening. This is the temperature difference between the, these two phase. And this is the the hatch is we define this is a heat transfer coefficients. It's dependent on the on this material and the system. System, okay. So as an example of the fluid in the tube, this for this example. Uh, I just called to consider the the diameter diameter is the d here, and the 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 length is going to be l. So, and inside of the surface temperature t zero, uh, and from to zero one to zero two, suppose the bulk the temperature bulk temperature for the fluid is t. Tb of the fluid and 
constant raw and this uh, constant pressure heat capacity increases from TB1 and TB2 in the heated section. So it's coming uh, from uh, in here is increased from TB1 to TB2. Then there are three conventional definition of the heat transfer coefficient for the fluid in the heated section in this section in the heated section uh, touching each other. The first one we can write by this formula, this first one. The second one is written this one. The third one is written by this formula from here. Actually, the H1 in the, in the first equation is based on the temperature difference uh, delta T1 at the inlets. inlets. HA, a second one here, is the based on the arithmetic mean delta Ta of the terminal temperature differences and uh, HLN is based on the corresponding logarithmic mean temperature differences delta T ln uh, delta T ln in here in here for the most calculation HLN is the uh, preferable because it is less dependent on the L over D than the other two although it is not always used in using heat transfer correlation from the uh, handbooks and the uh, literature one must be careful to note the definition of the heat transfer coefficient so in here uh, in here, uh, for for the different uh, for this system and for the other system, we can estimate the heat transfer coefficient from the correlation that exists in the literature. But we should be careful about the definition of the heat transfer coefficient. So this is the first section is talking about the definition of heat transfer coefficient and transfer coefficient um, definition for the flow in the tube. Actually, in our first case here. For example, uh, going to the other part. So this shows the analytical calculation of the heat transfer coefficient for the force convection through the tube and the slits. One another section. In here, you can go check here. Um, also another section, heat transfer coefficient for force convection tubes. Okay, calculations and dimensions, numbers and groups. Is, they are all given here for the calculation of the heat transfer coefficient and second uh, type we were talking about the heat transfer coefficient for the force convection around the submerged object um, another uh, topic of interest real important is the transfer of the heat to or form of the object around the which fluid is flowing the object may be relatively simple such as single cylinder or spare or it may be more complex such as tube bundle made of a set of cylindrical tubes with a stream of the gas or liquid flowing between them. But the book only examine here only the few selected correlation for simple system. And the first one is going to be the system flow along, along the flat uh, plate for the heat transfer uh, coefficient correlation. The second system is going to flow around the spur. Third one is going to be flow around the cylinder and the other is the flow around the other uh, object. So, in final topic here, final section, heat transfer coefficient for force convection through the pack bed reactors. So, when, when the solution of the pack bed we encounter in chemical engineering, um, uh, mostly in or uh, process design or other uh, experimental, we can go this uh, section to 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 talk about to see the discussion about the heat transfer coefficient inside of the pack beds. Uh, reactor so okay i'm just gonna uh, uh finalize our my discussion in related to uh, energy transport here by this video uh, for now then i'm gonna move um, the section uh, of the mass uh, transport then i i just go over the chapter by chapter in the uh, also in section three but later I will come back and I will just start it from the beginning and just go over some special topics and more details on some part of the book. Okay, see, uh, see you in the next video uh, in the mass uh, transport part.